What is happening, guys? Today, we're going to go through the long awaited speed ramp tutorial in DaVinci to give you a super smooth speed ramp. If you're stuck in a position where your speed ramps look better than Premiere Pro, but not quite Final Cut, then this is the tutorial after. This is something that I haven't seen online anywhere else. Um, I've looked through YouTube, I've looked through Google, because once upon a time I was sitting in your seat trying to work out how these guys were doing it. And finally, I worked it out, and today I'm sharing that knowledge with you. Now I'm sure this is gonna end up on every DaVinci Creators YouTube page within the next few weeks, but you heard it here first. So let's just get into it. As I said, um, so we've got two clips on the screens. The first one is zooming out. Um, so have a look at it. I'll go through that again. So I've just got a song in there just so you can see how it looks when you uh, get it to run on the beat. So super smooth. All right, so um, that's your first example. We'll have a look at another example. Um, and then I've got a third example here that we will build together as we go through the tutorial. So the first thing you want to do is obviously pick a song that is suitable for, I guess, this style of video. Now you just heard the song I'm going to use in the examples, but it's this one here. So this is perfect. Bit of hype. Uh, it builds over time and has big drops. So um, next thing you wanna do is, I guess, find the clips you wanna use. Now the first clip I wanna use is this one here, and I've gone through and selected the area that is usable. So this one here pushes straight through the door and out. So I'll drag that in there. And the next clip I wanna use is the hallway. So same thing, nice straight lines, pulling back. And it's probably usable to about there. Cool. And we'll drop that in as well. Awesome. Now the next thing you want to do is you want to find the part of the music or the beat that you want this speed ramp to start on and finish on. So for me, probably about there. And you want to place a marker. Make sure you place the marker on the timeline and not the clip. You do that by unselecting any clips and hitting marker. Or, yeah. Right there on that is exactly where we want this speed ramp to transition. Hitting the marker again. So now we've got our in and our out point. Cool. Now the next thing we want to do is uh, basically stabilize the clip we want to use. Now you can use any sort of stabilizer, stabilization method you like. I'm just going to use perspective because it's the default and I'm just going to keep moving with this tutorial. Cool, now that it's stabilized, what we want to do is right click this clip and click new fusion clip. Um, then we want to go over to fusion. Now this is where um, the secret source gets added. So the first thing you want to do is um, make sure you apply it to this line, but it's shift and space and you want to type in time stretcher. It's already typed in for me. Um, hit add as we did, Oop, just do that now. Now, if it hasn't linked up to the media in and media out, just hold it down, hit shift, and drag it on. Cool, now once that is on, what you need to do is find your markers. So these are my in and out points right here. At your in point, you wanna head over to your right-hand side where it says time stretcher, and at the source time, you want it to say zero frames, because this is the start of the clip. This is the first time we're seeing the clip. No frames have played through, so it's at zero. So make sure a keyframe is placed there, which it already has for me. But if it hasn't, hit keyframe, hit enter, and place it at zero, zero. Now the next thing you want to do is go to your second marker. And at the moment, this second marker represents 57 frames into this short clip. Now that's great, but there's no speed ramp there because that's just playing through at the rate it was recorded at. So what we want to do is we want to replace this 57 
with a total amount of frames because we know that clip we have, we've harvested basically the best segment of the clip, what we can use. And that there is 607 frames and it says it just there. So then what we wanna do is head over to the source time on your right hand side and type in 607, hit enter. And now what you're gonna have is a linear speed ramp, I guess you can say. So it goes from zero to 607 frames in a space of, I guess, 57 frames. Now this here, if you play it through, it's gonna look something like this. Not very exciting. Um, so this is where we need to soften that speed ramp and apply some curves um, and get it starting slow and quit punching out real quickly. So the first thing you wanna do is head over to here, grab the Bezier, slide it down or bring it down and then head over to the start and do the same thing but about there. So what this does now is it starts slow, starts slow, starts to climb, and then it's at its maximum pace just here. Okay. Cool. Now a good tip and trick here is the starting bezier. Make sure it's not completely horizontal because in the start of your clip will be pretty static for, for a decent duration of time. So you always wanna have it slightly, slightly uh, up um, to keep it on a diagonal. And might just move this marker and then just bring this up a little bit as well. Oh. Hard to keep that below, cool. All right, so now that we have this curve, it's starting to look a bit more like um, a pretty, pretty good speed ramp. <laughs> And you can see that punch out at the end. So once you have a new Fusion clip, what you need to do is jump back into Fusion. Now, I like to apply a transition that I've created, um, which is a zoom in transition. They're very easy to make, so if, if you know how to do it, go for it. If not, you can jump down uh, below in the description of this video, head to the Juco Media website, and it will be on there. So, once you've hit space, you've basically searched up your transition, enter, um, and, and you'll get this sort of thing. Then what you need to do um, is basically find the end of your clip. So for me, it's obviously on this marker. Highlight all the curves um, and drag them across to the end of this clip. So now what you're gonna get Something like this. There you go. It's a bit laggy, but we got there. Cool. So that just really sells the transition. Um, so that's your first clip done. So then what you need to do is right click um, and hit render in place. I always go ProRes 4444. 4, 4. Um, I think this gives me the best quality. So render that in place. We'll save it anywhere for now. That has now rendered out. Cool. The next thing you wanna do is the motion blur. Now everyone always asks me, what motion blur are you using? What's your plugin? Why does your motion blur look so good? I use the inbuilt motion blur in DaVinci, not even vector motion blur, just motion blur. I think your biggest issue you'll run into is you're applying this motion blur and you're not getting what you're wanting purely because you're doing it wrong. Now I've only found success with this motion blur after I have rendered the clip in place. So once it's rendered in place, assuming you have your color grade, all you need to do is come up to the right here, type in motion blur and drag your motion blur on. Now. At the start of your clip, you don't want motion blur, so bring this down to zero. At the end of your clip, you want the most motion blur, so bring this up to the max, which is 100. Okay, then what you want to do is bring this to better. Uh, motion range, you'd think large is the best, but I've had the most success at medium. Um, and then advanced controls, um, bring this the whole way up to 20. All right. And then just for the purpose of this tutorial, so it's not lagging, I'm just gonna render it in place again. 
You don't need to do this, but just so I can show you guys a clean playthrough. And then you should get something like this. Cool. Awesome. Next, we are going to do our second clip. Now, our second clip um, is very similar. So we've obviously selected the part of the clip we want. Now, this is actually heading in the wrong direction. So we're just going to click R. Um, reverse this, um, stabilize it, and then we're going to create a new fusion clip. All right, so now it's heading in that right direction. Cool. So just like we did with that first clip, what we want to do is place a marker um, where we want this clip to end. We already know where it's starting because we have a marker in place, but now we want to place a marker where it ends and I've just put it on the clip. So get unselect the clip and hit it again. And now we've got it on the timeline. Once you've done that, you can open this infusion. Cool, same process, time stretcher. Okay, and we'll drag this to the start. Once again, our mark is there. We know that is zero frames because it's the first time we're seeing the clip. No frames have played through, it's zero. Then what we want to do is head on over to our second marker, which is here. And at the moment it's 50 frames, but we want to take that up for the whole duration of the clip. So it's 305. And now we should have that linear speed ramp. Now this is the opposite of what we just did. So we want the most speed at the start of the clip and then we want it to slowly ease out towards the end. So same thing, but back to front now. So we're gonna bring this bezier up, creating this arch. Um, and then we're gonna bring this to about there. So if I bring it up to here, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a real static clip towards the end and when it kills the flow of your video. So if you want this clip to speed ramp at the start, but continue at a good speed towards the end, you just want to bring it down below the horizon. And if that means bringing this down, so be it. Let's get rid of this marker so I can work on that. Let's bring it to about there, and now it should be about there, cool. Let's bring this marker back so we don't get confused. All right, now we should have something like this. Bit laggy. But it's already starting to look better. Next thing we wanna do, bring this back into about here. We wanna create a new fusion clip. Once we've created a new fusion clip, now you can see the stabilization is actually stuffing this up. So I'm actually going to go right back to the start and take the stabilization off. And I wonder if I can do it from here. Nah, so we'll open up in timeline. Take the stabilization off again. Open it up in timeline. Take it off again. Bring it back to the original timeline. Much better. Cool. Next thing we want to do um, is the same process as before. So once you have your new fusion clip, what you need to do is hit shift and space. Once you hit shift and space, you can drag and drop in your zoom in transition. For me, it's Juco zoom in two because it is the second time or the second clip. Um, so this just finishes off the transition from the first clip. So drag it on. Um, and that will sort of automatically drop in at the start of the clip. So if I drag to that first marker, yep, so that transition starts there and it runs for about eight frames. It's just there. And now we should, I shall rent, I'll render this in place so we get a smooth playback. Cool, and now we should get something like this. Same goes, now that it's rendered in place, we can now apply that motion blur. 
same thing. So this is where you want your most motion blur. So you're gonna drag this up to 100. If you're gonna go better, keep it at medium. Then at the end of your clip is where you want no motion blur. So you're gonna drag this down to 50, drag this up to 20, and cool. Now it's starting to look good. Awesome, and that is how you do the speed ramp transition as a zoom in. Um, I hope you guys have benefited, benefited from that. And let me know if you have any questions.